Assalamu alaikum everyone. I am Dr. Wajesh Shabir and I welcome you all to another interesting case on ECG interpretation. This is our ECG for today. This is an ECG of a 25 year old lady who presented to emergency with palpitation. Her echo was done about a week ago which showed a structurally and functionally normal heart. Before starting the discussion, as always, note down the findings and diagnosis with yourself so that at the end of the video, you can compare your findings and diagnosis with the discussion done in this ECG. Now beginning with the discussion, as you can see that the very first and prominent thing on this ECG is tachycardia. The heart rate is around 300 and 150. Also, the QRS complex is wide. It is more than three small scale. So this is a broad complex tachycardia. In case of a broad complex tachycardia, the next question which you should ask yourself is whether this is a regular broad complex tachycardia or irregular broad complex tachycardia. Because if the broad complex tachycardia is irregular, it would mean that this is an atrial fibrillation or multifocal atrial tachycardia with aberrancy. Whereas a regular broad complex tachycardia means that this could be a ventricular tachycardia, supraventricular tachycardia with aberrancy or entridomic SVT. So when we look at the different RR intervals, here you can see that the RR intervals are regular. So we may say that this is a regular broad complex tachycardia. As I told you uh, even in earlier videos that the differentials of a regular broad complex tachycardia are ventricular tachycardia, supraventricular tachycardia and antidromic supraventricular tachycardia with aberrancy. As you know all that the criteria which we use to differentiate a ventricular tachycardia from supraventricular tachycardia with aberrancy or entridomic supraventricular tachycardia is called Brugada criteria. We will not go into the detail of Brugada criteria because we have discussed it already in detail. So we will apply the Brugada criteria here on this ECG. The first step was the presence of concordance means that in the precordial leads all of the QRS complexes should be negative or positive to call it our ventricular tachycardia. Whereas here we can see that the QRS complex is too dom dominantly negative in first three leads whereas it is positive in leads C4, V4, V5 and V6. So we may say that this is the concordance is absent in this case. Moving on to the next step, we select a QRS complex where the distance between the beginning of R wave and the NIDER of NIDER means the lowest part of S wave should be more than three small should be more than 100 millisecond. Suppose we select this QRS complex. Here is the beginning of QRS complex, whereas here is the NIDER of S wave. If we trace it down here, the distance between the beginning of R wave and NIDER of S wave is from here to here. It is around 3 to 4 small scales, which is definitely more than 100 milliseconds. So, the second step on a Brugada criteria that is the different distance between the beginning of R wave to the NIDER of S wave is more than 100 millisecond means that this is a ventricular tachycardia. 
Additionally, we can also find that the morphology of QRS complex, broad QRS complex is of left bundle branch morphology here. You can see a small R and deep S in V1 while a prominent monophasic R wave in lead V6 which is very typical of left bundle branch block morphology. Also when we look at the axis, the QRS complex is predominantly negative in lead 1 while it is positive in lead AVF. So this is a right axis deviation and it is also called inferior axis because it is axis is more than 90 degree in this case. Also another important point which you should note is that the transition zone that is the lead precordial lead where the R wave is equal to S wave is V4. Normally in a normal ACG it should be V2 or V3. So whenever you find a ventricular tachycardia with left bundle branch morphology and inferior axis that is right axis deviation and a transition of QRS complex in precordial leads which is after V3 you should always think of a ventricular tachycardia of right ventricular outflow tract origin. The importance of diagnosing right ventricular outflow tract ventricular tachycardia is that it could be associated with arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy which is a deadly condition and it needs placement of an implantable cardioverter defibrillator. Also, if the echo is normal and patient does not have ARVC or it does not fulfill the 2010 task score criteria for ARVC, the second important point in diagnosing an RVOTVT is, is that it is usually sensitive to beta blocker. Also, if patient is having recurrent ventricular tachycardia despite on a beta blocker therapy, we can go and ablate this RVOT focus which is producing this ventricular tachycardia. So this is all for today. Hopefully you like the video. For more videos, kindly subscribe to our channel and stay tuned. Allah Hafiz and take care till next time.